Hello there. Hi, friend. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Great. Um, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another um, Conversations with. Today, I get to spend time with uh, my friend and colleague, Akua Noni Parker, only upward on here on Instagram. I'm Hope Boykin, and you can always find me at HB Dance. And we thought, what better way to get to know a little bit more about your favorite Ailey dancers than to have a chat? And so here we are, Akua. I, I will say, I think we should just get to talking, but um, I know we're in unprecedented times, and as we stay home and stay safe, it just reminds me that I haven't really seen you since March. And I think it might be a full month. I mean, we were on tour, and then we, we I think we left Iowa City, flew to Dallas, mm -hmm. had a meeting, and then flew home the very yeah. next day. So how yeah. have you been doing? Like, what's what's been going on in your life, and how has that affected you? I don't want it to be heavy, but it's the way we, it's, it's who we are, and and you know, it's our truths. Well, fortunately enough for me, it hasn't really been that heavy. Um, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just gonna say, I don't know why, and I'm gonna accept that it hasn't been right. that heavy for me. It has been a month because I counted the week, that was the week before my birthday. Oh. So my birthday was the 25th. And oh my so God, it's it definitely sure been, it's definitely been a month, you know? Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Happy belated birthday. I forgot. I failed. No, I no. Failed. There's no failure. I, I don't failed. really <laughs> celebrate it. It's just another revolution around the sun. Yeah. You, know? you look good, friend, though. Look at Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I was like, what do I wear? What am I going to put on? And I was like, I want to act like I'm going to a reception. So, <laughs> well, you see, I put on a little up. pearl and... Yeah. Uh, added a lip for you so thank you so <laughs> if you if you're just joining us I'm Hope Boykin and I'm here with my friend and colleague Akua Noni Parker and we are just going to talk if you have anything you'd like to say hi Vera um, if you have anything you'd like to say please like click the question mark it's right next to the comment bar and I'll share some questions that you have for either of us um, so let's start from the beginning how did you get started like what's your Tell me the first part of your dance story before Ailey fell into your life. The first part of the dance story would be one that was told to me at first. My father said from when I could, before I could walk, I could dance. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have had my father growing up. And so I re he's six foot three. He used to put me on his feet and <laughs> you know, you're holding and, and right. he said I could keep a rhythm and, you see these kids, you know, these babies. And so before the, before I was three, I was dancing. And then straight away, they put my sister and I, um, which they call Irish twins, we're 15 months apart. Oh, okay. They put us in dance. And this is when it was ballet tap jazz. Right, right. You know? So you didn't just want to just right. dance. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> and she and I looked alike, a, a lot alike. Um, we were about the same height. And so all of our pictures are like, you know, <laughs> The boogie woogie piggies with the <laughs> oink oink and you know sunflowers and bumblebees and all of these things, and um, that was in my in my native in our native state, um, North Carolina. North Carolina, yeah, yeah. And in fourth grade, I, we moved to Delaware, and I just was still dancing. I still knew that's what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to do ballet. I wanted mm -hmm. to just strictly be a ballerina. So they, my parents put me in a, a dance school called the Academy of the Dance. And my, my teachers lived upstairs um, and they had converted a town home, a brownstone, whatever, you know, city you're in, it's a different thing. Right. Um, and they converted the, low, the first floor to a studio. Mm. So, um, yeah, about, I'd say about 600 square feet, you know, you could Tombe Paparigli saw it and you were done again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that's where, that's where it all began. And so then the ballet thing, like the ballet situation, the ballet I mean, I know that you were um, a, a member of the Dance Theater of Harlem, which I want to talk about that because I've 
seeing photos of you and I mean, this was, it was a, seemed like a lifetime before you joined the Ailey Company. We've been working together for 12 years, 12 years, 12 years. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think you look okay. It wasn't. I do. I'm just going to keep saying that we look all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, I know, you know, I got these good jeans. We got good jeans now. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> Thanks, dad. <laughs> Um, it was a lifetime, it, you know, now it's been two years longer in Ailey, but um, I, I had gone to a summer program in Dance Theater of Harlem in, um, oh my gosh, I was 15. So I came to New York when I was 15 and I actually stayed in Yonkers, um, right across from the park with a family, a host family. And I, that was the only summer program I did. And then right after high school, I got into the second company off of uh, Mr. Mitchell and Levine Naidu, Tyrone Brooks, remembering me from the summer program. Wow. Yeah. And so my career just kicked off from there and um, just stuck with ballet for the longest. I was just determined to be, you know, the next black ballerina. I was really um, determined to do that. And when Dance Theater of Harlem folded, Unfortunately, I, but fortunately for me, I was lucky enough to um, go to Cincinnati Ballet and then San Jose Ballet. So I just want to like backtrack a little bit with your time with Mr. Mitchell, because we didn't get to know Mr. Ailey. We have, we, we, we know him through the people that, that uh, we've learned from and the people who are still around, who were a part of the organization that he hired, those that we know, you know, Renee Robinson, Sarita Allen, who knew him. But tell me what it was like working with someone who founded a company in the middle of a time when there wasn't really room for us, for people who looked like us. Well, Mr. Mitchell was tough. He <laughs> was, I mean, you know, this is like the, we're talking about the tough love era. Mm -hmm. You know, to so and um, just coming up in an era where um, you had to fight for the things that you were so rightfully yours, right? So he tried to always instill in us that where we were now is not is he fought for all of those things, right? And so we were a pure representation of everything that he had accomplished up until now. You know, uh, and, and as I've had time to like look back and be um, introspective and it's just, I mean, I really, he and I butted heads a lot. <laughs> He's an Aries also, so <laughs> we are ramming, we are, you know, <laughs> um, and I had a lot of mouth. I still have a little bit, you know, I know how to mumble. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> And um, we used to butt heads every now and then, but you know, I mean, I, I, I love tough love. I work, I operate that way. And, and um, for me, it's when they don't say something that I think that I know they don't like me, mm -hmm. right? It's when they're right. saying something and they're on me and they're paying attention, then I've caught your eye and I must, I must have something that, that wants you to keep picking at me more Absolutely. than anyone else, right? Absolutely. So I know that now and I've learned that a long time ago, but not then. It wasn't then that I had realized that. Right, right. So in, in the transition, because that's a transition from, from the ballet world, we like to call it a world, it's a dance world. But you know, you're transitioning from a company that does mostly rep that's about this ballet rep into a company that does mostly modern rep that's mm -hmm. founded on the black tradition and American modern dance, um, even though we do everything. I mean, mm -hmm. I just have to say that I really do work with some of the most amazing dancers in the world. But what was that like for you? I mean, you, you were going from something that we like to say is upright to something it's very that's upright. not upright at all. And I with mean, the difference, and you know, watching things and, and doing, looking at some of the older pieces that I had either done a section of or um, I had done some of the full ones that Mr. Mitchell had choreographed. I, I think a lot of the movement was closer to, outside of Mr. Balanchine's work, there, were a lot of, there was a lot more movement that was closer to, you know, moving the torso and closer to the modern approach. But then after leaving that company and going to um, classical, ballet, right, Cincinnati Ballet and San Jose, you're dealing with just classical ballet and contemporary. Mm -hmm. 
nothing really modern based, right? So then going to Ailey was so extreme for me. And I, I thought it was going to be easy, right? The, the experience that I had was that I'd been in other companies, mm -hmm. right? And I knew my, my body in a way of classical technique. But there, outside of that, I had no clue. I was lucky enough to have been in the union. So those things were familiar. But outside of that, I mean, it was like walking in blind. And it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> It well, was definitely difficult. I mean, I really thank a lot of you, some of you, Miss Jamison, everyone was so patient with me for so long. I, Ronnie, oh my goodness. The, the hours in the our studio. Our director, right, yeah. Just teaching me buked in yellow, like, and dancing to words. I had never done that. Like, really? I was like, I need counts. I need Really? <laughs> yes, and Ronnie counted everything for me. She is a counter. <laughs> But for people right that one. she yes. can do both, right? And that's, yes. that's the, the a rehearsal director is supposed to do, right? They need to be able to speak the language of the person that they're, that they're coaching and teaching, right? And so she, I've watched her with people that don't count. And I've, I know her from when I first entered. And she is just a phenomenal um, person. But, you know, like for that, for that position, she's just great. Right, right. So just one more thing that I that I want to tap on when you moved from dance theater of Harlem to Cincinnati and then to Santa Fe, were you a minority there? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, and so how was that transition in and then that transition back out into Ailey company where we are predominantly a black dance company? I mean, we, we are encompassing, we are a multicultural company and it's always been like that. If you go online and look at photos as early as 1961, you know, 62, you, there's always a mix of people, but how was that for you? Well, I, uh, hmm. I don't really know. Hmm. I've, I grew up in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. I think, I think I've always switched back and forth between you know, what that is. So I grew up in the suburbs, but I wanted to be a ballerina. So I was always one of a handful. I mean, and I'm talking like if there were 20 students in my school, I was one of two, right? right, right. But then I go to the summer program at Dance Theater of Harlem, I'm not going to be the only one, right? Mm -hmm. But then I joined Dance Theater of Harlem and it's predominantly African-American. Cincinnati, I was one of two. Mm -hmm. San Jose, I was one of two, but then coming back to Ailey, right? So I think I've always gone in and out, back and forth. And I, I, ha I haven't really had an issue per se. I think that for me, I can say that there was always this underlying uncertainty of, um, you know your worth, you know what you're capable of, but you can't understand always why this person gets a role and you don't. Mm. Right. And the only thing that you know that they can't say is it's because of your race. Mm -hmm. Right. So I didn't want that anymore. Right. I just didn't want that anymore. So when an opportunity came for me to not have to question that, I hopped on it. I think the reason I, I went there and it was not really on my plan to ask you is just that because I know that there are young people who look like us and they're young people who have said to me or their parents have said to me, my daughter saw you on stage and thinks that she has a place. But you were in a you were in something very different. You were you were forced in not forced as in um pushed but you you wanted something so much that you wanted to be in this environment no matter what the cost mm -hmm. and I feel like that that's important that that young people are able to ask you those questions what that means to you how difficult it was or maybe you know it, it was worth it because some of those things I think I came into uh if I'm honest I think I came into the realization of race late on in life so I think um, some of that has a lot to do with it. Right. Yeah. So it's when you like when you start to really realize, oh, I don't look like everybody else. At some point, you know, you don't realize that as a child, right? Those things are right. taught. Right. But then you you start to realize, you know, or I I I started to hear stories that you know some of the students' parents 
weren't okay with the roles that I was receiving only because of my skin, you know, and how my teacher would fight for me in certain instances. And so that was pretty late. That was, you know, like in high school. So it was pretty late on that I really started to realize what roles race played in certain instances. Mm. I um, know that you're creative on stage. I know that you are a wonderful teacher. Um, for those of you who may not know, when Akua teaches company class, not just company class, she teaches everywhere. She's an educator. When she teaches company class, nine times out of 10, the majority of the company is in class. But what people may not know is that you're also creative in the kitchen. Mm. And you have done so many things as far as making life work while you're on tour. So I know you're a vegan and I know you're a vegetarian. Can you talk about how you decided to transition and what that meant? Like, 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 was it health wise? Was it because something happened? You wanted, I don't know, you know, you hear things from other people. I don't like to see animals killed or I want to clear skin. So I tried something, you know, what was your reasonings behind it? It started off with a cleanse. I wanted to do a cleanse. And then um, some people say, okay, I've done that. And then, you know, now that, mm -hmm. and then they just go back to their regular way of life. But if you really listen to your body, sometimes your body's saying, do more, mm -hmm. you know, don't go all the way back. Um, and so I had done this cleanse. And at that point, I, the first thing was I became allergic to gluten after that mm -hmm. cleanse. Um, and so that was the first thing I took, I'd taken out of my diet. And then I wasn't ever really like a huge chicken fan, um, <laughs> as a stereotype might not go, but, um, I took chicken out of my diet. And so I hadn't really had, those were the two things that came out. And then all of a sudden, of course, I choose on tour in Paris. Um, I was not going to have any cheese. Why in Paris? <laughs> I don't know. Glasses going but on. Sorry. By this time, <laughs> by this time, I had um, I had um, already been cooking in my room. I, we'd been to Paris a few times, and I decided not to have cheese. And then I was like, "Why don't I just go all the way and just mm. take meat out of my diet completely?" And I did it, and I felt so much better. I noticed some major inflammation go away from my body and some of the injuries that I had just didn't, I didn't have any pain. Mm -hmm. I had, I didn't have this. It wasn't that I didn't have the injuries, but I, um, I just didn't have the same pain. So I stuck with it. Um, I uh, want to share a, I know that you have a channel and I'm working with my uh, technology here, but I know, you have, I know you've got a channel and, and you have cooking with Koo. Can you talk a bit about that and, and how that came about? Uh, I want to, I love to cook for people. I love when people cook with me. I, Wait, I uh, think I can throw up something. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Okay. You have to I think make you it made a little that. smaller because we're oh, split screen. Oh, That's sorry. Great. That's some tacos. Yeah, I just made that the other day. <laughs> um, that's great. I love that. Um, I, uh, I really like cooking with people. I think that we're, I know you and I grow up in school with home ec, right? And, right. and, it's, and not everybody knows how to cook. But I don't think that cooking is that difficult, especially when you when you when you have someone to learn and then you can just be creative. And if you continue to taste and taste and taste your food, you'll figure out um, what works for you, what tastes good. You can find somebody's recipe and go, mm -mm, I didn't like that. But what would you do to that same foundation that would make you like it? Right. And that's really all that that cooking is. So what's that channel? It's just at Cooking with Coop. It's K cooking with Koo, mm -hmm, KU. Uh, it's on Instagram right now. I'm working towards a YouTube channel. It's really hard because I've been trying to marry everything the cooking with Koo, the only upward, because they are wholly and fully me, right? right. I didn't get 
to, I mean, I, I did start ballet at some point and dancing, but then dance and especially Ailey, Amos, Renee, um, even just the work, the way we work um, at Ailey, just, I just came into this whole body consciousness about um, what I put into my body, how I work, how to, how to, how to make my injuries work for me and not against me. And so all of those things really culminates another, like just one solid place that I can hopefully become the, the cooking, the channel, the channel on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. But you know, what's interesting is that we always feel like we have to compartmentalize ourselves and we don't, especially as artists. We are all of these things. Mm -hmm. We are the people who may not feel like it, but still go on stage. We are yeah. the people who experience loss, but still go on stage. We're hungry. We still go on stage. We are injured. We, that's what we're not just paid to do, but we're called to do it. And I think right. it's okay that we're all the things. I mean, I really do. I'm being funny, but I really do. I think it's okay. Um, I want to jump into a couple of questions that are coming in. Uh -huh. uh, the first one, um, it's from Heather and oh, Heather Ann Wall. What do you believe makes a great dancer? Oh, that's not one. That's not one thing. That's, <laughs> that's a lot of things because, and this is what I, I think I'm still learning, right? I think as a, I'm a class taker. Mm -hmm. I am a technician by nature. But what I have learned is what do you do with that technique? to allow you to move and to move your body, but also to reach people, mm -hmm. right? And so maybe you're not completely 180 degrees turned out or 160, 180 degrees turned out, right? Who is, right? But what is what does that rotation make someone feel, that presentation of the leg and the foot? What is that saying to, you know, in the in the character, in the role that you're doing, right? Um, so it's not just one, maybe it's mindfulness. I think that that would be the one word that would just, it brings everything together. The, the, the emotion, the technique, the, the spatial awareness. Um, and, um, and yeah, I think, I think mindfulness would be what makes a great dancer. Yeah, you know, if I were just to add to that, um, a former company member that uh, Sam Roberts, who's a really good friend of yours, Matthew always quotes him. And uh, he says, when anyone asks him what it's like to be an Ailey dancer or to be a dancer, a professional dancer in general, Matthew says, well, Sam always said, if you're afraid of hard work, this isn't the career for you. And so it has to come from, from the mindfulness, from using what you have physically, your rotation, uh, your, your whatever your what makes you feel like your lack of rotation, because mm -hmm. as I've gotten mm -hmm. older, it has decreased and that's just real. But then there are times when I know that as a, as a, as a veteran dancer, I am also better than I was because I've had all of these experiences. So our experiences, the, the technique, the training, the, the studying, the foundation, everything that you're saying, you're right is is all it's all of the things i want to go to um another question which is um okay maybe we can both tap into this one but uh how do you recover from moderate to severe injuries and i'm not sure raliat period underscore is asking that question how do you how do you recover how do you recover from severe or moderate injuries uh, I think that that's always physical therapy and a regimen for exercises, right? Um, some of the injuries are, are never going to go away, right? And this is what this is what I've learned is that dancers have the highest pain threshold of anyone ever. I okay. care. Bring somebody to me. I will. <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> all the things that we yes. do, and you will never know. Never know it. That's exactly right. You will never know what's going on, right? So I think if you if you are the hard work comes in doing those exercises uh, as well. It's um, you know I mean 
I can just tell you it in this career in general, injuries are almost inevitable, right? It's, it's how you learn and apply because really it's just weakness and overuse either one of the two or a combination of both. Right? So for me, I can say that I had to do fix me so many times that my left side and my back is just like, if you do another arabesque, I'm just not going to be your friend anymore. Wait, like, look, <laughs> you're killing me. Right on time. <laughs> <laughs> See that left arabesque too. It was um, beautiful. That arabesque is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I I learned um, just so many different exercises from you know where and learned that I was weak in certain areas that just helped me so much. And you know, also cross training. Um, you know, different ways of using. Uh, certain muscles and engaging certain muscles and also breath just who <laughs> sometimes will really help okay so I'm gonna just I'm gonna throw one more question in from our uh, friends that are watching and uh, then I'm gonna come back let's see are there certain recipes or food oh wait I'm supposed to share it oh this is from my friend um, are there certain recipes or foods you turn to when you're sick to support your immune system? What a perfect question from You know Jerry that, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah you know, I was like, now, wait a minute. Because <laughs> everybody in the company always knows I'm not feeling well. Go, go to a Kua. But who, I've done it, too. I'm like, oh, I have a scratch. Do you have some, some oregano oil or... You gave I remember something being once. in Argentina uh -huh. and um, making some, I had the sniffles and making some, I call it a sick elixir. It was a soup, <laughs> right? Because I just, it was basically chicken noodle soup without the chicken, with all the vegetables, sauteed. I mean, because I felt like once I took out gluten and meat, I can have corn, rice, and potatoes in the same meal if I wanted. You know what I mean? Right. So it was just a combination of all the spices and all the, all of the stuff in a soup. So yes, there's from oregano oil. That one is key to me. I don't go anywhere without it. Right. Um, so, th but that one, you have to be careful. Sometimes it comes pure and uncut and it will burn you. Mm -hmm. I actually have used it to rub swollen areas like my knee and forgot that the, the version that I had was pure and uh -oh. could not take the burn off of my skin, you know? So right. um, that one, and there's also black seed oil that I take in the morning and uh, fire cider. I take a tablespoon of that combination in the morning. Also lemon water. I start my day with lemon water and then go to the tablespoon and then the coffee. I think you're going to have to put the recipe for your sick elixir on cooking with Koo because okay. um, we need I'll to write know that. that. Down. <laughs> so um, what are some of the things, you know, I know there's a lot of, uh, uh, a, a lot of lives, a lot of videos a lot of things that are coming on television to help us stay in coming on television, coming on the internet to help us stay fit. What are some of the things that you're doing? Um, Cause I, I see you tag posting sometimes that you're in two or three classes a day. And I'm thinking, goodness gracious, I just did some pushups. <laughs> you know? Well, I can say that um, I might look in shape, but uh, there ain't nothing like city center shape. <laughs> Those of us that know, know, right? But there's also, I mean, even after two weeks off, you're you're just not, you know, you're. I mean, you can you can make the shapes and do the things, but when you come off stage, you're gonna be like, whew, child. Right. But right. I um, I've always always took former company member Michael McBride's jazz class when he was teaching us because he's just so fun and the camera loves him so <laughs> and so do I. So I take Michael McBride's jazz class that former company member Aisha Mitchell has put together this sort of schedule that she's mm -hmm. stuck with. And between Sam and Michael, Samuel does a, med a guided meditation. And sometimes he has had me on to interview. He's starting a show called Today with Samuel Lee. And then Michael does jazz and he curates this playlist for these crazy moods and the first one 
two weeks ago was dedicated to Rona. <laughs> and the first, the plies were, how did you get here? <laughs> Deborah Cox, is it? Is that? And it's it just, it's just light and no one's in there, you know, no right. one's here judging me or whatever. And so I just, I do some of those. Fauna does a Horton class. I still, I still need to talk to y'all though, because can we move flat backs a little bit later? I know that's <laughs> not the, um, yes. the order. But yeah, I actually, I actually, in my contemporary Horton class, you know, I like to say contemporary for the kids. For Generation Z, they like contemporary the name. So for my contemporary Horton class, they are a little bit later in the, but we're just older. That's all. Our, our backs have done things and that's it. That's all. That's the only reason. I know, I know. But yeah. you know, what's funny to hear you say all of these names of this family that you, you know, met and grown and loved with have come and stemmed from this organization. You oh know, my God, so many, so, so many. many. It's like we I, can't, it's like you didn't even know you were going to have this kind of life and this kind of future and forever with these people who are now your brothers and sisters forever. I mean, I can't. I almost can't. Some I talked myself out of calling Sam the other day. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I can't FaceTime him anymore. Like, I, I gotta have something to say. <laughs> Just call and wait. And he has so, a husband, right? So, like, I, <laughs> so someone said on this feed, and then I'll go back to a question. Why do you think, uh, why do you think Ailey was the company that allowed you to listen to your body? What makes Alvin Ailey's technique more embodied? And this is from Ashley Brack, I think. Um, it's that's an interesting question, and I like it because uh, I I feel like I feel like there are things that are naturally you know, inherent in us. When we watch those videos of the little kids, um, the little African kids doing traditional dances, and people will post videos of, of, of babies moving. You know, you see them, you, you see kids in diapers doing salsa to mute, like there's something that's just inside. And so when someone, a, a man like Alvin Ailey has created a place for people who look like him, grew up, you know, in similar situations like he did, creating a place to dance, it really just makes sense. But like I said, we're a, we're a, we're a multicultural company. And, but when people come to the company, they come knowing that they're also celebrating this African-American tradition along with the works that we've, you know. But they also, if I can, I think what is celebrated is yourself. Right, because we all receive the same information about revelations, about the history of it, about what the step is, right? But we all we all come into the company different. Yes. I came in with the same foot, right? Some right. people came in with six pirouettes, right? Some people came in tall, short, brown, light, straight hair, dark hair, right? <laughs> but so we already are, are bringing our different selves to whatever this movement is yeah. and how do we how do we convey that within ourselves into to the next audience right and it's going to look different some people prefer this person doing this role over this person and it could be the same the same amount of people across the world right 10 people can like you doing that role and 10 people can like me doing the role the exact same role right it's it's something that is just different it's just how some people like people and some people don't like other people. It's literally the same thing. Right, right. Um, I have a question for you from uh, our friends. Um, from Ordinary Reflection, how was her audition with Ailey? Ha 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 I know the story, but tell it. <laughs> the first audition, so I came, I was called in, um, truth be told, I was in San Jose. I had just, maxed out my credit card because I I had known that I was ready to leave the company and I purchased a round trip ticket to uh, Monaco and I'd gone to audition for Ballet de Monte Carlo and I was waiting to hear back from them I was filing unemployment on Ballet San Jose only worked 27 weeks a year mm -hmm. so we were off like whoo a lot Mm -hmm. um, and I just maxed out my credit card and Antonio was like, do you want to audition for Ailey? They need a replacement for an injured dancer. 
Antonio Douthit. Boy. Antonio Douthit, whom I danced with in in uh, Dance Theater of Harlem. So I'd known him, he and Alicia, but Alicia had left. I think I only spent one season with Alicia Graff in DTH. So I was like, yes. And he was like, okay, well, the audition's in two days. You got to get here. And I was like, <laughs> how do I get? I don't know. And I was like, dad, I need, <laughs> I need to go. I need to go. He was like, what? To dance with Alvin Ailey? You might get the job. And I was like, yeah, the round trip ticket is. He was like, girl, this is last minute, but you're going to pay me back when you get this job. <laughs> So I flew here and um, auditioned. I had no clue, but you know what the, by the grace, won't he do it? Guess what was in the audition? Night Creature. The River. Oh, The River. The oh, River yeah. and Night Creature. The River that Both. Ailey choreographed originally for ABT, and I should know the year, 1970-something. Forgive me without my Ailey history, but yep. Uh -huh. And also, and also, uh, What's Pepto Bismol Pink? Um, Did you just say that, Sweet Otis? Yes, Sweet Otis. <laughs> I'm so bad with um, with names. I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm Sweet Otis. Because right <laughs> that's the color of the costume. It is. <laughs> you knew what I meant. I'm dead. Dead. <laughs> we are live. That's what I love. I love. I know, but I don't change whether I'm Why live. I wouldn't want you to. I wouldn't ask you for a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really fortunate. Miss um, Jamison was pushing me. I had to do those triple pirouettes, boy. And um, the Petit Allegro was, you know, that was like a, a breeze for me. And then um, Twin Cities was part of the audition for, um, for From the River. Mm. Uh, so I really lucked out on that one. You know, that was like the classical uh, foundation. And so I, I joined on a six month contract and that was, you know, slowly extended as the dancer that was out, you know, they started mm -hmm. to figure out she couldn't come back for a little bit longer and a little bit longer. So that turned into the balance of the season, which was almost 11 months, which is a year. Mm -hmm. um, so then the company had a two day vacation and we came home and that second day was the company audition, which I had to re-audition. Ah. Yes. So we're in the audition and everyone's looking at me like, I thought y'all were on tour. And I was like, we were. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm here now. So I was like, how do I make myself stand out? Like, I don't even know if I have the job second time around. So I wore red from head to toe, turtleneck, sleeve, red pants. I acquired all this and I went in there. I was like, I was early and I thought I was going to be like, you know, number five or something. I was like 78. I was like, I was, I was like 40 minutes early. I'm still number 78. I, don't, I had gone to take class upstairs mm -hmm. so that I could be warm for the audition downstairs. Right. And um, that went, I mean, that was really, it was really, it went really well. I was, they were doing, they were teaching stuff that I had been doing on tour. So that was interesting. And I started to sort of, you know, help people through some things that they didn't pick up just because that's, that's just who I am. Team. That's who you are. Yep. Yep. And, um, and yeah, that was, that's how that started my, the second year of my 12 year tenure. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the name and, um, and, and, you know, it's important to, to, I, I think it's really great and important to talk about these things that are you because, you know, the people who come to see us perform and audiences who see us perform, see what we give them. They, we mm -hmm. show them the choreography, the steps, our feelings, and occasional <clears throat> pre or post performance discussion, and then our social media, which mine is completely curated. So, you know, I give them exactly what I want them to have, but I love this conversation. I think it's important. But um, you mentioned Judith Jamison, and mm. I would love it if we could talk about her a little bit. I mean, first of all, this woman, well, okay. I mean, we could play a game. We could play, we could play the Judy game, something like I, I'll say um, icon, go. Intimidation. Oh. 
um, uh, pioneer? Uh, like somebody's grandmother. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Just like, oh, and you auntie. Have this? I have this. And you, I got it. Here, go take it. And this. auntie. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, um, Fauna, Fauna just wrote Queen Mother. That's one. Queen Mother. Yes, yes there that's it is. It. Queen Mother. Exactly. Uh -huh. um, what I love about her is that there is a, there's an understanding that she has about the person she has become. You know, she she really, you know, if you take these weed whacker, I don't know what this machete type thing is called. Mm -hmm. And if there is like a field of madness in the dance world, then she has created this 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 tool to help make a lane. And then we join in and we make oh someone else wrote guiding light. That's right. Oh Daniel Harder, guiding light, goddess. Um, we should just play the game with everyone else. That's right. Um, yeah, I know. Wisdom. Legacy, stoic, <laughs> um, giant, yes. regal, strong. Thank you. Yes. Uh, brilliant. All of, yes, all of the things. Um, but she is, she, she, she's, you know, made a path. We, we rock her do. Uh, you know, she had it first, a low cut first, but in our, in our naturalness, we are finding that there's beauty in this, like we could see her beauty. You know, what has it meant to to you to be hired by her? I know you danced in him and Forgotten Time, but you've done a lot of roles that she's done. I mean, you know, so it's it, sweet. A Matt lot of people Taylor. don't know. Yeah, a, a lot of her roles. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't know. So my ballet teacher, whose name is James Jamison, he <laughs> passed away when I was um still in middle school um he taught her mm. uh and he liked to say that she was his long lost daughter because they have the same last name but he spelled his i e and mm -hmm. she just with one with an i right right and so he he would always say i can't wait for you to meet her i can't wait for you to meet her and then i told her and she was like oh my gosh i know that school blah blah, blah. Um, and then I hadn't really, even though I was hired by her, I hadn't really spoken to her, like gotten to know her um, until she taught me Fix Me, which <laughs> I think it's just so great because she um, can speak lay, she can teach dance to anyone, right? I think so too. Perfect. Yes. She can yes. teach dance to anyone. And so she just took, she knew my mind was in the classical ballet world and she took every piece of Fix Me and told me when to lean over, but then told me the Horton terminology for it, right? right? So I gradually learned, you know, those things, but I learned Fix Me from her. And I've, I've just, I was fortunate enough to have always been in the room when she was teaching her roles. Mm -hmm because I want, there's what I, what I know that I want to continue to work on is the humanistic approach to dance, right? Ballerinas are like, just like the jewelry, the, the jewelry box, right? It's just like this little thing and you're like, oh, I want to be this thing. And it's, to me, it's a little um, intangible. And I think that's the difference with this company in general is that things just are within reach, right? If you think that if everyone can do step two, step two, then everyone can dance. It doesn't have to be on the rhythm. Rhythm can be taught, right? right. I really think that that can be taught. Um, and and so I think um, dance is always taught and Miss Jamison is almost like a personification of that, really. She's just so human, but because of her stature and because of who she is, you, you always just want to have the utmost respect for her and give her the utmost respect, but you always still want to keep her a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> you know, like, like your grandmother, right? right, like, right like, you right. know what I mean? Like, I'm always like, I will talk to my grandmother too long, but when I do, it's like, she talks and she talks and then she goes, okay. And I'm like, all right, all right that's, that's it. it. <laughs> Um, I just want to take a couple more questions from our friends. Um, uh, oh, someone has said, uh, Massage Beyond Antoinette says, make your channel, maybe your channel should be called All of Coup. <laughs> hey, write it All down. Of, write it down. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Okay, here here we go from Antoine Byer says, what has been your most challenging role at Alien? How did you tackle it? This has got to be perfect, isn't it? Does it do I know what you're going to say? Okay, yes, I think you know. I think you do know, but when I really think about, I mean, they're both Ailey roles and they're both Miss Jamison's roles. First and foremost, cry. I think everybody knows that that takes the cake. I ain't never been on stage that long by myself <laughs> having <laughs> to pace the room. <laughs> Uh, you know, emotions, right. lack of the water, right? you know, matinees, the right. yeah, all of the elements. It's cold right. in the theater, you know, nerves, musicality, you know, all those things. But really, Massa Kayla, that solo is a lot harder because of the emotion, right? Because yeah. it's almost like... Um, to do the step, some of the steps is almost too much, right? Like when you have to experience like, it, right? Right. When someone is beaten down, when someone you know is in an abusive relationship, which I, fortunately I've never been in, so maybe that might be why the role was so hard for me to portray. But continually, you know, going back to that and saying I'm going to do better this time and he's not going to do that to me again and then you know this this rise and fall of acceptance and emotion and and trying to dance that is really in in a, in a five minute solo versus 17 minutes right like cry is you know kind of it's kind of set in its up and down emotions whereas this solo is like you're beaten down and then you have to stand up and fight again and you're beaten down and you're standing up all in five minutes. And that to me is what's just a lot harder. And I'm just going to, cause I was about to say it, Kyla Sloan said, what was the name of that role again? And I think we affectionately call it black dress because that's mm -hmm. what the character wears, but it's in Masakela Langage choreographed by Alvin Ailey in honor of Hugh Masakela. And it is an experience, the whole work is an experience. The curtain comes up, the story has already started, the characters, the the set, and then the curtain goes down and you know those people are still living and it's really some kind of piece. I've done two roles in that work and there's one role of mine that I can't watch your person. And we've been on stage at the same time. My chair is literally facing the wing. And so mm -hmm. all I can do is hear you experiencing all those things. Mm -hmm. I hear you hitting the floor, hear you running. And that was not saying that I didn't enjoy it when I watched the person when I was um, the other character, but knowing that is happening behind you and there's discomfort, it's really something else. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sure. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just do a, a couple more questions from here. Um, I just saw that Kelly, cause I just know Kelly. Yeah who used to be in a former company member, okay. Kelly said, did I ever start crying during that role? I'm not sure which one, but I definitely lost it. Like I think my, in the second, not the second time, but I must say the second year I was doing Cry. Mm -hmm. I was going through a lot that year. And at that time, Linda was coaching me through, like she was, she was responsible for rehearsing me all the time. And she kept saying, Linda you, said you you've got to like what's your story why have you gotten here what is this what are you going through like and you know she scolded not scolded me but i felt scolded because i'm one of those people that doesn't really share everything and i'm kind of guarded she's like but now's the time when you can let us in and i lost it in the top of the second section right when you're depleted right when that first note hits and i lost it and i kind of don't remember getting through that second section hmm. i don't remember what that looks like or felt like because i was just trying not to actually continue to cry through the whole thing well i remember that um because i've always been in the wing for you mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. those performances and you don't need to remember it because it was an experience you know, and I think that's part of that's part of performing too. We 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 want we wanted to have. Um, I don't know if everyone knows that we're both in our final months with the company, and we wanted to to dictate what our final performance was. And I don't know, and I deal with that emotionally every day, whether or not I've had it. 
you know, um, even when we I did this Revelations inspired video, I was like, wow, is that the last time I'll perform Rev, you know, for an audience? And it hurts my heart, but then I'm also grateful at the same time. But mm -hmm. we do have experiences that will always feed us, whether we remember the steps, do you know what I mean? Or remember how well we did, or did we hold that, or did we were we on our leg? But it was really um really something else. Okay, so just because we're winding down in time, yeah, I just want to say a couple things because I'm supposed to. One is, <laughs> um, if you want to dance at home, I am reading it straight off of my iPad. <laughs> if you want to dance at home, you can really find out all the things. And that's with the alextension.com slash uh, keep dancing. You can we have online classes, you can check on all of the things that are available because um, more of this is going to happen, but we know that, that you can find those classes at aliextension.com slash keep dancing. And be sure to keep checking in with alvinaley.org slash Ailey All Access to find out about the digital content that's going to happen. And tomorrow, we were talking about Miss Jamison, but tomorrow night, which is Thursday, right? Am I correct? Tomorrow yeah. night, I think it's at seven o'clock, you can see Miss Jamison's Divining. Um, it's going to be on Facebook, on YouTube, and then streamed on uh, Instagram. You can always go to the Ailey IG and find it anyway. Put in divining in your Google search. Set your alarm because let me tell you, our friends and coworkers that are dancing in this thing are no joke. And if you want a little teaser, um, Danica Paulus, who is our, a company member, a friend of ours, and she's also a brilliant filmmaker, has put together a montage of divining that's on the Ailey IG page. So um, I did all my plugs. I'll probably say them again, but check us out because we're here for you. This time that we get to chat, I mean, I found out things I didn't know about you, Akua, but I feel like, you know, this is what's important for our audiences, for our friends, um, our extended Ailey family everywhere. These are the things that are going to keep us together you know, during this time. And I have, a, I, I want to touch back and see because some, some more questions um, have come up. Uh, let's back and put them, I'll, I'll, I'll throw them up and then we can see one is, do you believe age is an important factor in dance? And that was T. Williams. And then let's see, there's one more, um, uh, wait, wait, what is that? Oh wait, that one's for me. Oh, hi Hope, what is your story on how you got into the company? Ooh, we'll do that one another time. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, tell that. She was a long time ago. Um, but is age, a, is age a, a factor when it comes to dance? Absolutely. So we can both that. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you don't know what you don't know. And right. <laughs> number one. And I really think, like I said, I think everyone can dance. But I think technique, what, whether it's Horton, jazz, ballet, whatever, that foundation and going all the way through that is going to be your saving grace when you become a professional. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, as a young, as a youth, as a young dancer, you, you just can do, you just, you're just excited. You're going to throw yourself around. You're going to be into everything. And then at some point it's the investment that you have given to dance now becomes the investment in the specific roles, right? It becomes the investment in yourself that makes you capable of doing specific roles. And if you don't have the life experience, you will not be able to give those roles the same value. And, and when it comes down to uh, what you're capable of and your ability, you know, they're different. And mm -hmm. I found that I, I said it earlier, I found that I am better now, but I'm not as capable. You know, my ability has become limited. I have to wear glasses to see. You know, there's there's a general deterioration of certain things. And as we fight through, climb up from injuries and and you know, it's it's, it's like having a heartbreak. Your your body eventually gets stronger from it and 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 your mind gets stronger and that experience takes us um to new places. People popping these questions up at the last minute. Hold on now. We have to pop off, I think, soon. Um, so why did you become an educator and why? And this is great because we always have to tap into our young people. Hold on. Let's see. Did it go up? Yeah. Why did you become an educator and why, Kua? 
I think I think it is just inevitable. So many people tell me that I can that I can teach really well. Um, I can't say that I always enjoy it, um, just because I want to give every student the same value, but not every student is uh, either wants to be there. Number one, we have to realize that, and number two. Um, Everybody can't move at the same pace, right? And as, as you're going to different schools, you see that there are different levels and some teachers or studio instructors are trying to push one student, whereas another student is already at their peak, right? And they may be going off to college or whatever. So you have to learn how to, um, to mold everything into one level sometimes. But I really enjoy sharing. Mm -hmm. I, en I just enjoy it. It's not... It's just because I don't think that when you learn something, I don't think that you should keep it to yourself. Right. I think you should share and then the people that want it can receive it. And those that don't can just send it into the ether. And I think that um, it's important that you say that because we are here as gifts to other people. We've been given gifts and we've been given gifts to share them. And I think that that's been great. I am thrilled that we've had this time um, together. Oh God. <laughs> If I could play some music, I would. I said that to Matthew. If I could have some outro music, maybe I'll find a way to play some some music next time. But thank you yeah. so much. Don't forget, everybody, it's AileyExtension.com slash Keep Dancing, AlvinAley.org for Ailey All Access. Tune in tomorrow for Judith Jamison's Divining on YouTube, on the Facebook, and on the Instagram. You can find us at all of the places Anything and that will else? be for a limited time too oh, yes so, yes right? so it's so, only like 72 hours so. oh and someone asked about your diet akua and i'll just say that we will put this uh live back on our story so you can try to fish through and hear about all the ways akua does all her things and stays looking what is that hashtag you have body bsb so, ballet social body ballet, ballet social body <laughs> you can see her ballet social body <laughs> but thank you all so much. Thank you, Akua. Thanks, Hope. Thank you. Love y'all. Bye. Bye.